for most of us at some point in our lives we sit back and have a look at some of the things we spend our money on. Now if you have looked at one of my previous videos about why I'm dumping Sky TV um, that was one of the first things that I decided to, to do and incidentally I haven't regretted one little bit. And then I thought, why am I spending money every week on this? Now this is TV Guide. It's sold in New Zealand and for those outside of New Zealand, my apologies, this won't be of probably any interest to you whatsoever. Now this costs $2.40 every week. So in a year, I found myself spending $124.80. So let's have a look at this magazine and see what the alternatives are. Now the first thing you notice is how small the magazine is. Now we've been in New Zealand 14 years and the magazine hasn't really changed in those 14 years. Now when you consider when we first came here there was four TV channels and now there are, well, too many. So the consequences are the listings have got shorter, it's like here, you are literally down to the time and the program. There's no other details whatsoever. To be fair, the main channels like TV 1, 2, 3 and Prime do have a little bit more information on there. Now the first 24 pages contains articles and stuff like that on the programs as well as, as, well as a few advertisements thrown in. Then we have two or three pages of film reviews which to be fair are generally quite good. Then we get to page 30 and the TV listings follow. Now the only ones that are listed fully are TV 1, 2, 3, Prime, Choice and Mari. And there's a very small listing on the bottom for Channel 4. But the Channel 4 are just one word titles or I should say one sentence titles. And then we go on to the satellite stuff. Now, if you've got satellite, that's fine. But one of the reasons I'm ditching the magazine is because I now watch 99% of my TV from the internet or from the BBC, neither of which this magazine covers. So the only pages that are of any use to me are the two pages you can see here. The rest of it are superfluous. Well, we've got to page 100 now, and uh, then we have an advertisement, and then a couple, no, no, not a couple, one, maybe two, let's have a look. Yes, two pages of details of two of the radio stations in New Zealand. The National Radio, which is similar to Radio 4 in the England, and the concert channel, which again is similar to Radio 3 in the UK, both of which are the only two channels in the whole country that aren't supported by advertisements every two seconds. And then we come on to Mr. Telly, uh, which again, ironically, people complaining about too much adverts, uh, but we won't go there. And they're basically letters from readers. And then we start up with all the rubbish. Now why this stuff in a magazine like this? I, well I do know why. Um, it's because it makes money. And then we have something which absolutely mystifies me. Why people read this stuff. But I suppose if you... <laughs> I'm a loss for words. Why it's put in a TV magazine I cannot possibly imagine. And then we go on to the next couple of pages. Puzzles. Again, why in a TV listing magazine? It gets worse. 
And then, oh, more puzzles, more puzzles. And then kids' puzzles. Now, to me, there's all those pages. Why can't they expand the listings to tell you what the program's about? I don't want a, a whole biography or something like that. I just want to know rather than, fair enough, if you look at, say, Coronation Street, apologies to the people outside that um, are from countries where they don't see Coronation Street, most of Asia and places like that, but virtually everybody else on this planet knows what that is. So you don't need a synopsis, okay? But some of the other things that are in here, they're just one or two words, and you just don't know what they're about. And yet you've got all this crap at the end of the magazine, you know, and more adverts at the back. I understand adverts have to be in it to subsidise the thing. But why, are they, why do they always advertise shit and, and stuff that um, is pointless to you? You never find anything of any use. The certain types of advertisement that are always in such magazines, pills and tablets and things that are going to make you look 100 years younger. My only comment to that is, if it worked, there wouldn't be any old looking people like me about. So again, it's a mystifies to me why people I read these things and even more pay money for them. Look at these, $89. Ah. So what's the alternative? Well, this is the alternative and it costs nothing. Now, this is Freeview and it's the EPG program guide. This particular page is looking at TV1 and on the right you can actually see a bit of the picture and below it you can see a brief synopsis of the program. Now the synopsis on here is generally more comprehensive than you get in the TV guide. And if we go to another channel, this is TV2 um, a similar thing and you're even told the series and the episode number which again very useful and we go one more again new episode well that's useful to know now even if you're really almost brain dead and you want to watch advertisements all day you can watch the shopping channel and to be fair even that shows you what advertisements you can watch so there you are if you want to save yourself $125 a year and be no worse off, the only thing you've got to lose are horoscopes. Now that's an amazingly bad thing to lose. Puzzles for your kids, which in that case, buy them a puzzle book and there'll be hundreds of puzzles, not just two pages worth. So there you go. Nothing actually against TV Guide as a product. If you want to, to read the product, uh, to read the programs, fine. There's nothing wrong, but it's just my personal view. I don't need it, and I can just look at it on the TV and know what's on with more detail. Which, when you think about it, you buy this to know what's on and a bit about the program, and this tells you what's on, but it doesn't give you much information other than the very basic channels. So, there we go. You make your own mind up. Thank you for watching.